Hello and welcome to the wine region we talk about in Spain. We have a look at the very southern region of Jerez de la Frontera. We have a look at the very south of the country and Andalusia is a very, very big region and autonomous province uh, in the south of Spain. And there are several wine growing areas there. By far, the most famous one is Jerez de la Frontera, which the English simply called Sherry and the Sherry region. Sherry is a world famous fortified wine made in a quite small area of the country considering the size of the rest of Spain uh, in the very south. So the English name Sherry is the, let's say, not, not perfectly pronounced Spanish Jerez. Sherry can be crisp and dry, bone dry. Then we have, for example, Fino or a deeply flavored dessert wine very rich, high in alcohol and very sweet. And there are quite a lot of wine styles in between. Today, winemaking adheres and follows still the traditions, but in technology is very modern. So most of the sweet sherry wines are still made with the tradition of drying grapes outside in the sun, as well as the aging system in the bodegas, in the cellars. These are the traditional solera systems. We will have a look what that means. While the blending and the bottling happens in stainless steel and with very modern infrastructure, and facilities. On the tiny map on the upper right hand side, we see the Iberian Peninsula and we see that the uh, regional capital Cadiz is located at the very south of the country. When we now have a look at the big map, we see that Cadiz is very close to the so-called Sherry Triangle. The Sherry Triangle uh, is uh, composed of three towns. The most important one is the one that gives the region its name, and this is Jerez de la Frontera. The second one is San Lucar de Barrameda, and the third is El Puerto de Santa Maria. If you now um, kind of link those three towns, it forms a triangle, and this is called the Golden Sherry Triangle. In this zone, we find by far the best sherry produced in the entire region, and these are composed of three grape varietals, Palomino, Pedro Jiménez, and Moscatel. It is said that in history, um, in the south of Spain, just like in the neighbor country, Portugal, numerous grape varieties were planted, and in Jerez alone, um, the recordings say that there were up to 250 different varietals. Nevertheless, the three sherry varietals, as they still are mostly planted nowadays, were always the most important ones. They are Palomino, Pedro Jiménez and Moscatel. They are all white grape varietals, 
And if you see a very dark red brownish sherry, you may wonder how the color came into those wines. This is because of aging and we will have a specific look on that. The different types and the different styles of sherry are not only influenced by the grape variety used, but also influenced by the production uh, method that starts with drying the grapes. And secondly, how these wines were aged and stored. Basically, we can uh, divide wine styles in sherry into two main areas. The first one is uh, our wine styles that um, develop because the wines are aged under a floor. The floor is a natural uh, kind of protection that forms within the not entirely filled barrels. So you can imagine that like a kind of layer which is composed of um, dead yeasts, so it's called lees. And the lees, they form a kind of covering shield on top of the wine, which um, makes the wine oxidize, but very slowly. And in a floor oxidation process, we um, find aromas and notes that develop that cannot be uh, copied with any other type of aging system. So this floor protected aging um, gives different flavor components than the other big type of sherry wine, which is aged in barrels but has no floor protection. The one that has no floor protection are the rather nutty styled wines and they get these nutty aromas from barrel aging and oxidizing in the barrels. This is the same that sherry is always an oxidized wine, but they don't have these floor characteristics, which um, smells a lot like um, fungus, mushrooms, and has a very fresh and crisp style, whereas the not floor aged, they are very nutty in style, can be dry, then they're called olorosos, can be sweet, then they are in this cream sherry um, wine style. When we look at the different nomenclature that is used to describe different styles of sherry, we see that they're quite numerous. Basically said, we can um, distinguish between dry sherries, dry sherries that are aged on the floor and dry sherries that were not aged on the floor, we can then say there are semi-dry semi or semi-sweet and sweet sherries, such as medium dry and cream sherry. And the third category are very, very sweet sherries, and they are labeled Moscatel or Pedro Jimenez. So they have the great variety on the label and then only this grape variety is used. As you can see also, and it is displayed here, there are also a big range of color from very, very pale in color, like a manzanilla or a fino, to very dark, even black 
in Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel. This color comes from drying the berries and aging the wines in an oxidative style so the barrel are not barrels are not totally filled and they're not topped up with wine so they oxidize within the barrel and this brings the dark sometimes very dark color into the wines they do not have their color because the uh, skin of the grape is blue or dark they are all white grape varietals of the dry sherry versions we specifically have a look at manzanilla and fino once the grapes are harvested they are brought to the sherry houses where they undergo a totally normal fermentation for a dry wine so for manzanilla or fino the grapes are not dried outside in the sun but they are harvested um, and brought to the sherry house where they are processed the new wine is then placed uh, filled into casks where it is left so that a floor layer a layer of dead yeasts also called lees uh, forms on the surface of the wine the wine then oxidates through this layer of lees and uh, this covers the entire surface area of the wine if you visit the region which i can very much recommend you will find barrels that have one uh, part, a cover part of the barrel uh, that is made of glass. And through the glass, you can see that the barrel is only filled to three quarters. And on top of the wine, you will see the floor that has formed uh, out of lees and that uh, creates a kind of natural protection from very fast oxidation nevertheless the wine is oxidating through this floor layer the casks will become fino sherry or manzanilla sherry um, and they're also aged in a fractional aging system called solera which I will explain later on with a visualization how this Solera system works. At the end of the aging period, the Fino is removed from the casks on the bottom of the Solera system, and these wines are then fortified by adding additional alcohol. So, also the Fino and the manzanilla sherry are fortified wines but they are first of all light in color the manzanilla and the fino are very pale actually in color and they are fortified with a sherry brandy so a liquor that was made of sherry by distillation and this uh, liquor is also transparent so it hasn't been aged uh, in barrel and doesn't have a lot of color to it and what we get out of it is a very fresh intensively uh, of uh, floor smelling dry and strong white wine two types of sherry that are also dry but not aged under a covering floor of lees are Oloroso and Amontillado. Those two uh, oxidize in the barrel but with no floor covering and they are left longer in the so-called Solera aging system. So they stay longer in the barrels 
and they need longer um, to, to age in those barrels and they are accordingly darker in color, richer in, in flavor components and they have a very characteristic nutty flavor. Still, they are totally dry. Um, they are also fortified before they are bottled and the fortification then kills the remaining lees and leaving some unfermented sugar for the wines that have then uh, residual sugar left. So the ones that are, for example, medium uh, sherries, medium dry sherries or medium sweet, whatever way you want to put it. Oloroso sherries um, spend longer time in the solera and therefore have a deeper color and are more concentrated and richer. Some Olorosos are then further sweetened by adding sweet grape juice from sun-dried Pedro Jimenez grapes. And then, of course, they're not dry anymore, but are then called medium, so-called medium sherries. Interestingly, in Spain, especially in bars and restaurants, um, you can hardly find any medium because they're mostly exported. So ordering a medium dry sherry in Jerez is quite a tricky thing because the Spanish, they prefer the bone dry versions uh, Fino Manzanilla with floor or Oloroso and Amontillado which are aged for longer time, have a more intense color, but are still dry. When you hear about sherry cream, or when you hear about Moscatel and Pedro Jimenez, you have to be aware that those sherries are very sweet. So cream sherry is the general name for different kinds of sweetened sherry and it's usually produced by blending Amontillado and Oloroso wines and that are then sweetened with the wine or the really thick must that you get out of Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel grapes, which were left out in the sun to dry. Lesser quality cream sherry can be sweetened by adding grape must and color wine, yeah? And this color wine that makes uh, the end product very dark um, can contain arope. And arope is a kind of caramelized cooked grape must. So you can imagine it like this, the grapes are put out uh, in the very hot sun of Andalusia to dry until they're like raisins. Then they get pressed. And when you press such a raisin, you get a very thick um, syrupy style uh, liquid out of it. And this very concentrated must is then in addition cooked and caramelized. And this liquid is then put into a dry amontillado or oloroso or a blend of it and with this system a sweet wine is produced. Medium sherry as already mentioned is half sweet and the sherries that display the grape variety Moscatel or the grape variety Pedro Jimenez on the label, they are very, very, very sweet and also dark in color. The traditional maturation system used in sherry is called solera. Solera is used to produce 
all types of sherry dry medium dry sweet very sweet and uh, it is originally from andalusia also used by the way in the wine region malaga and is very characteristic for those wines but it is also used for spanish brandy uh, and also for uh, vinegar and it is also used in portugal for madeira and port wines so interestingly this tradition from the south of storing wine in a solera system um, has a long tradition and is used in several regions in sherry it is important to know that it is applied for all sherry wines no matter if they are dry or uh, semi-dry or sweet how does that solera system work basically it works by passing on the content of the barrels which are piled up into the next lower layer of casks the very upper layer uh, so that the barrels that are on top they are called tercera criadera so it's kind of the third level and the wine inside is called sobre tabla when you then fill from the third criadera into the second criadera you do the so-called saca so you sack yeah it's uh, even works in english you sack the wine you you kind of get it out of the uh, highest level barrels and fill it into the uh, next layer barrels um, you have to know that in this oxidation system a lot of wine oxidizes and that uh, you need uh, uh, hundreds of barrels to get them full and this racking system would then the, the longer you leave the wine in the barrels you always mix up different vintages and in the lowest level in the solera you might have a mixture of wine um, where the oldest one is 50 60 70 or more years old and it's always blended together with the higher layer wines so it sounds perhaps quite complicated and it is because you have to keep an overview uh, which uh, wine now to blend and fill into which uh, next level and it is a complex system of blending together different vintages then wines from different barrels and depending whether it's a solera for Fino and Amontillado, um, then it depends how long you leave the wines in which criadera, so in which level. You find examples of bottles uh, of sherry uh, in the different styles, so from dry on the left side to very, very sweet on the right side. We start with an example from Hidalgo Efino, um, which, as you know, is aged under a floor of lees. Then an Oloroso, which is oxidative without floor. Then we see an Osborne medium sherry, which is really mainly for export. So you find medium sherries in every supermarket in Austria. You find medium sherry in every supermarket in Great Britain, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Spain. It's really hard to find. So every supermarket would have a Fino, a Manzanilla, an Oloroso, an Amontillado, but no medium sherry. Also, cream is 
not very common in Spain. So we see here a uh, sweet cream sherry, uh, which is really not easy to find in Spain. The very sweet ones, like displayed here, Lustau Moscatel or Hidalgo Pedro Jimenez, they, these you can find easily in Spain, in the supermarkets and in every wine store. But the medium and the cream are something that was not only uh, kind of invented by the English, but is also pretty much made for the English market or other export markets. The Moscatel and the Pedro Jimenez displayed here, they are very sweet wines. And from the left to the right side, it's increasing in sugar level. Um, yeah, actually, drastically. <laughs>